Saudi Arabia's public prosecutor has said most of those detained in an anti-corruption crackdown last month have agreed to pay settlements. Saudi officials say those who refuse could face prosecutions. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman is heading a newly formed anti-corruption committee that has so far questioned 320 people. 159 others are still being held in Riyadh's Ritz-Carlton Hotel. Among them is the Middle East's wealthiest man, Prince Al-Walid bin Talal. He's worth nearly $17 billion and his business empire includes stakes in Citigroup, Twitter, eBay and the Four Seasons hotel chain, among dozens of other companies. Prince Mitab bin Abdullah, the former head of the Saudi National Guard and a son of the late king, was released last week. He reportedly agreed to pay a $1 billion settlement. Allegations against Prince Mitab include agreeing illegal deals over weapons and military supplies for the National Guard. Detainees also include construction tycoon Bakr bin Laden. He's the chairman of the Saudi bin Laden Group, which monopolized deals on mega expansion projects in both Mecca and Medina throughout the reigns of Saudi monarchs. The bin Laden family is worth more than $7 billion. Businessman Al Walid Al Ibrahim is also included in the roundup. He is the owner of the television network Middle East Broadcasting, or MBC. He's worth almost $11 billion. Let's get more on this now with our editor-at-large, Craig Peters, who joins us from Paris. Craig, welcome. Uh, let's start with Prince Al-Walid bin Talal. He's the head of Kingdom Holdings, as was said. Tell us a little bit more about why he is such an important figure in all of this. It has to do with optics. Uh, Al-Walid is the face of Saudi Arabia on Wall Street, in Hollywood, and in the New York media world, as you mentioned. He's worth close to $17 billion. His running buddies, his pals and some past business partners include Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, Warren Buffett, Klaus Schwab at the World Economic Forum. Um, you know, he has been involved on in deals with Twitter, Citigroup, Lyft, uh, uh, News Corp, Pepsi, and even the Disney Corporation, to name just a few. Right. He's the main man. Right. So the Saudi officials have said, and Mohammed bin Salman has said, that they plan to recover some $100 billion from this crackdown. Apart from covering the budget deficit, what is that money likely to be used for? I think the money is just going to be held tightly. What the young princeling wants is to control... Kingdom Holdings and the assets of Kingdom Holdings, and more importantly, the contacts that Kingdom Holdings has built up. Look, the word coming out of Saudi Arabia and on uh, people who know Al Walid on Wall Street is, is that he's still uh, locked in the Ritz Carlton. There have been some reports that he's been strung upside down and tortured. He's not allowed phones. Uh, there are no interviews, and they've apparently offered him a deal if he gives up all of his assets. Uh, and agrees to a lifetime house arrest, then they'll let him go. But what I'm hearing is he's, he's saying, no, I don't want to go anywhere. I want to go on trial. And as one businessman told me earlier today, there, are no, there is no such thing as a fair trial in Saudi Arabia. Mm, so that kind of leads on to my next question, which is about how foreign investors are seeing this. Do they see it as the anti-corruption <laughs> crackdown that it's been advertised as, or do they see it more as a purge? Uh, frankly, they don't know what it is, because corruption has been endemic in that part of the world for years. What, they do, what we do see is all of his good friends are, are deserting uh, al-Walid. And the reason for this, I mean, I'm, and I'm talking serious people here, folks like uh, Mike O'Neill, the head of, of, of uh, uh, Citigroup, very big names. And the reason is, is, I'm told, is that everyone's looking for a piece of the Saudi Aramco IPO. And they don't want to tick off Prince Salman because Prince Salman is going to end up with Waleed's assets. And hopefully, all of Waleed's old running buddies are going to still be able to do deals in Saudi, have access to those funds. So why anger 
the perspective, the presumptive king of the, of Saudi Arabia right. by getting behind their well, old so, friend Al Walid. So all eyes on that Aramco prize. Uh, so let's just talk about Kingdom Holdings for a second, Craig. What happens to Kingdom Holdings now? Well, according to their website, they are continuing business as usual. It doesn't say under new management, but uh, it's certainly written between the lines. I think what's going to happen okay. is like the same thing you saw with Hariri, as we discussed last week, is that is that Prince Salman and his coterie are just going to take control of this asset. And that's it. OK. Craig Capitas in Paris. Thank you ever so much.